You, Debbie. Do we have mics? Do we have mics? We do have mics. Yes, we do. I had to ask that for Michael. So, congratulations, <coughs> all of you. This is a real. It is a visual stunner. It is a story stunner. One of the best origin stories that I have seen in the in MCU. So kudos to you, Scott, to Cargill, and to you, Kevin, for putting all that together. Something that I, that I found very striking, very elegant uh, about the film is the hand choreography in conjunction with the visual effects. For the two Benedicts, Tilda and Mads, can you talk about that hand choreography and the elegance and the precision of it that was required in order to meld with the VFX? Well, that hand choreography is a, is a thing called tutting. We had a, a proper master working with us for weeks, I would say. I mean, just as much as learning martial arts, we were learning how to tut with Jay Funk, who is somewhere here possibly, but if he's not, you should go on YouTube and look for Jay Funk, because he really knows how to do it. And he's got yeah. properly magic fingers, like, you know, not like our fingers, like real non-CGI fingers. And he taught us a series of extraordinary, very precise movements, which have to be super precise, because if you're going to go like that, you have to be at a certain point where the line is going to be drawn between your fingers. And you can't, of course, be in front of your face, which was always my issue. I was always going in front of the, my face with it. And then you have to be exactly the right width so that you're in the frame. And it was super precise and uh, kind of hairy, but really good fun. And can we all do it now? Possibly not. Possibly I'm, not. I'm, I I'm, 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 I'm the, the, the lower not. league of uh, hand. Uh, <laughs> he didn't do very much. Yeah, he didn't have to do much, no. Not yet, maybe. Yeah, it was yeah, really you, you I need to practice in front of a mirror first. Yes, we need to practice maybe. in front of a mirror and, and, and Jay Funk, but yeah, it was a. Yeah. It was a you're right about, it was a great she's right about blocking her face, though. Here's half of my direction to Tilda was her doing things like this and saying, great, Tilda, just lower, lower, so I can see your face, lower, okay. But she was brilliant. I mean, she's being very humble about it. She was incredibly good at it, and also because she was instructing Strange at the same time. I mean, there was, there was some quite heavy dialogue going on while she was, you know, drawing a mandala and punching energy and doing very delicate stuff. You did, you did runes with brushes and all sorts of magic stuff. But which it's such fun because you have these extraordinary visual effects directors saying, by the way, this is going to look like this. And they'll show you one shot and you'll go, it's going to look like that. And they say, yeah, trust us, it will. And then you kind of forget that. And then if you're lucky enough as I have to have seen the film and seen what they did with it, it's beyond anything they warned us it was going to be. And uh, that's kind of why we look fairly relaxed about it, because we had no idea. I think if we'd known it was going to be so awesome, we would have been like this. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Right over here, front. Um, Mads, you've played in uh, Bond film, you played Hannibal, so you've done these really kind of iconic villainous characters <laughs> who were really relished their villainy, so to speak. But here you play a character who... Uh, from his perspective, he's the hero. He's going to save the world. And even when he kills people, and that's kind of a sign of his villainy, it's not really that different from some of the good guys who are saying, yes, we have to kill, but it's to save the world for a greater good. Can you talk a little bit about approaching a villainous role that, I mean, when you did it, did you kind of come into it just thinking, I'm going to play this character as the hero as far as he, he thinks it's a story about him like trying to save the world, the rest of them are the villains? Well, I, I always play all, all characters as a hero. Uh, I, I mean, I think we have to, uh, to look at it that way. I, the key to any good <clears throat> villain, <clears throat> which I think was uh, very clear from the beginning in this script, is that they have a point. Uh, it's not completely crazy what they're saying. It's, it, there is a point. Even in Doctor Strange's eyes, he does believe I have a point. Even though it's for a fraction, it's there. And, and I think that, that's the key for a good villain. You have to have uh, something the, the audience identify with. So he doesn't just go ballistic and say, I'm going to take over the world, and because I can. <laughs> it's fun. You know, no, it's the reason, <laughs> you know. Eternal life. Doesn't it make sense? You know, uh, and what's he thinking about up there? Well, honestly, just placing us here for a fraction of time doesn't make sense. So I'm onto something, and I think all good villains should, should be there. And then obviously it's in the script, and Scott was on that page. And uh, so we tried to make him a man who believes in what he's talking about, a little like, <laughs> yeah, a demagogue. 
Jamestown, or Jonestown, whatever he's called, right? Some, somebody who believes utterly in every word he says.